Hi everyone, I'm Pranamia, and welcome back to Pages of the Globe. Today, I'm going to be reading to you the short story called Guerra by Lulu Delarque. Now, this short story is from a book called Us in Progress, also written by Lulu Delarque, and it has many short stories. In this book, you will meet many young Latinos living in the United States, from a young girl whose day at her father's burrito truck surprises her, to two sisters working together to change the older sister's immigration status, and more. This is so interesting, and you can experience life through the eyes of these boys and girls whose families originally hail from many different countries. Guerra specifically is one of my favorite short stories from this book. In it, it's about this girl whose light skin and light hair makes her look not Latino. Because of this, two men start to speak in Spanish about stealing something from her. And she obviously can understand Spanish because she is from a Latino country. Now, I don't want to reveal too much about the story, so I'm going to tell you a couple facts about the author, Lulu Delarque. Now, Lulu Delarque has been writing and illustrating children's books for almost 30 years. I would definitely recommend that you check out Us in Progress because not only does it have some amazing short stories, you can also see Lulu Delarque's amazing pictures and drawings. Her Latino heritage and her wide-ranging life experiences are basically the basis of her books. She was born in 1957 in Puerto Rico. Delarque has lectured extensively throughout the United States, Puerto Rico, and France. She also attended the University of Puerto Rico. Her artwork is exhibited at the University of Puerto Rico Art Museum, the Memorial Art Gallery, Rochester, Keene State College, Children's Literature Gallery, and elsewhere. Her books have won the Pura Belpre Honor, the Obris Pictus Honor, and made the New York Times bestseller list. Her 42 tiles include A Rose Con Leche, popular songs and rhymes from Latin America in print for over 30 years and Us in Progress, short stories about young Latinos. Now, A Lisa After Marriage was published in 2008. It was written in memory of her daughter who was killed in a car accident at the age of 16. After Alicia's death in 2004, Delarque interviewed 22 of her daughter's friends. The thoughts, emotions, and memories they shared became the basis for the book. As you can see, Delarque takes a lot of her experience and writes them into her books. Golden Tales, Myths, Legends, and Folk Tales from Latin America was written by Delarque and published in 1996. I would definitely recommend checking this book out because it is so interesting. Now, let's get on to the story. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below which story you would like to hear next. Guero by Lulu Del Arque I rush for the Brook Avenue station to catch the 6th train to Brooklyn Bridge. I need to get on it by 5.30 or I'm going to be late. I'm meeting Cousin Tita at La Casa Azul on 103rd Street for my songwriting class. Just five stops. Ten minutes and I'll be there. I run down the stairs, pulling up my long curls with all my fingers into a tight colita. Tying the ponytail up quick with the rubber band on my wrist. Plaid bag across my shoulders. Cell in the pocket of my tight new jeans. Oops, it's vibrating, must look. I stop in my tracks, right in the middle of the stairs to take out my iPhone. Just like I know I should never do, it's so annoying, I get it, but I have to see it. A text, hashtag cool fiesta, Instagram link, yeah. Pictures from this weekend's party at Auntie Angie's house. Tapping fast, I find 
La Familia. Laughs are coming from behind. Someone bumps into me. I almost stumble and catch my plaid bag. Hey, keep moving! A man in a suit screams as he zooms past me, briefcase in hand. I know, I know. I wiggle the phone back into my pants, slide out the metro card, zip through the turnstile. I show up at the southbound platform at the same time as the chromie train. Walk in right behind an army man. Makes me feel safe, don't know why. The train swallows us all up in its sticky hot summer mess. In the corner, a woman clips her toenails. Disgusting. I hold on to a pole. At 5.31, first stop, two guys get in. One is a chaparro, a shorty. I've seen the other one. He's wearing a muscle shirt and a gold chain. From Mott Haven High? Kind of cute. Behind me, an old man gets up. I slide into a seat, peer at my phone to check. La Familia. There they are. Rita, Tita, Clara, Laura, Goda, Mari, Fabio, Archer, Anna, and me. All the cousins on top of each other, laughing, teasing, elbowing, fighting for the front spots. Tall, short, heavy, thin, older, young, shy, and bold. All of them with skin the color of Auntie Angie's craved by all cousins' hot chocolate, tinged with cinnamon, spiced with chili. All belong but me. Me sticking out like a sore thumb. Me with peaches and cream legs, like ghost legs next to Rita's. Me with copper hair, like bleach from the sun hair next to Mari's jet black, like Azabache hair. Mari would give anything for my hair, she says. I roll my eyes when I hear that. I want to change places with her so bad. And Gauda wraps her ivory scarf around my arm just to show that her scarf and my skin are the same shade. Archer jokes that I was found in a trash can and that's why I'm so different. That makes Fabio bend over laughing, but Tita gets all worked up and sticks up for me. Don't bother Guerra. See, si, I am Guerra for all nine cousins, Gurita for tios and abuelos. La familia says it's just di carino they call me that way because they love me so i'm the blonde one i'm the guerra when strangers ask my name i answer vicky my given name but who am i vicky or guerra i have a new song dancing in my head at 125th street i can feel someone staring it's just that subway sense i look up Muscle Guy and the Chaparro are now standing close. Too close. I put my earbuds on. Muscle Guy fixes his hair and flexes his muscles. Oh God, not so cute anymore. The Chaparro fakes a cough. They see me looking and glance away like they want, they're want. they wanting to hide something. But I see them. I stare at my phone and turn off my music. I'm listening to what they say. They talk in fast Spanish. They don't whisper because they figure it's some secret language I don't understand. But I do. Aguero, si da cuento la cuerta, says Muscle Guy. She won't notice. Go talk to her. Vecharla. Why do they want to talk to me now? Creepy. I glance at the LED display sign inside the train. We're at 116th Street. The Chaparro meets my eyes and smiles a crooked smile. He leans toward the other guy and mutters, Tu se lo cuitas. My ears perk up. They want to steal something from me. But what? Chimes. It's a text from Tita, who's already at the bookstore. Can't wait for me to be there. And then I know. My phone. That's what they want. I check and see the army guys right across me. The door is open for 110th Street. The woman at my left gets up and the Chaparro eases into her seat, gross. I inch away from him. His nasty cologne invades my space. I keep my cool. Hey, he says to me, I'm JT, you? I feel my temperature rising, like these two are dumb enough to think I'll fall for it. How annoying. The voice on the loudspeaker announces 103rd Street, my stop, but I stay put. Don't leave my seat yet, 
wait until the doors are just about to close. Now, I slide my cell in my bag. I dash to the exit. The doors creak to close. Just before stepping out, I turn, stare at the sleazy guys, and say, My name is Guerra, and I understand cara palabra. Their jaws drop. Like this girl with the skin of the color of hot white chocolate doesn't belong. But I do. I have chili, too. I run up the stairs and into East Harlem.